Bethlehem. Make Take your vote. Well, that sounds good. You hear that again. Bethlehem. Make, Make your vote. Amen. This is our new theme. Amen. Amen. For the year of 2012. Okay. We want to make him known. Last year we wanted to know him. Yes. And this year we want to make him known. Yes. That's what Share the Love Sunday is all about. It's yeah. about us trying to make him known. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Praying for our ten most wanted and yes. inviting them out. Yes. To yes. yes. Having a conversation with them about Jesus. Mm hmm. Now we can't force anyone That's to, right. to know him. Come on, come on. All we can do is be a witness. Mm -hmm. And if you witness right, mm -hmm. oh, someone mm -hmm. will want to know they him. Will. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Henceforth this month, that's what we've been talking about all of this month. Uh, mm -hmm. To make him known. Mm -hmm had the preacher on New Year's Eve night help to lead us mm -hmm. in the text that we are standing on all year long. Mm -hmm. Verse 20 says, Go, stand, and speak. Go, stand, and speak. Mm -hmm. And all this year we want to go, stand, sit, lean, whatever, and mm -hmm. speak yeah. about Him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord for I witness. I witness. witness. Mm -hmm. This morning we're going to share a message entitled The Well Water Revival. All right. Yes, sir. Well Water, well water. Revival. Mm -hmm. and I need you to do me a favor because of time. I couldn't preach the whole text. So I want you to do your homework assignment and read. The whole book of John chapter 4. Mm -hmm. All right. But this morning we're going to be focusing on 39 through 42. John mm -hmm. chapter 4 verses 39 through 42. Would you stand in reverence to the word of God? Mm -hmm. Stand symbolically saying that I will stand on the word, the word. of God. Yes, sir. Say to your neighbor, 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 or neighbor, or neighbor. I'm, going to stand I'm going to stand on the word of God. On the word of God. Amen. It's one slide. One slide. Let's read this out loud together at one time on three. One, two, three. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the one's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, sir. In the household of the Lord. You mm -hmm. may be seated. Amen. In the household of the Lord. And again, this morning we're talking about the well water mm -hmm. revival. Yeah. The well water well revival, water revival. Uh, began with a conversation. Mm -hmm. That conversation led to a convert. And that convert led to a company of people coming to know him. All right, all right, all right. Again, we're talking this morning about the well water revival. And we want Christians to know this morning that Christians should have a conversation about Jesus. Yes, sir. Christ. Should Christians have. should have a conversation about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Many of you may be familiar with this story. It's a story uh, known as the, Sam the S Samaritan woman yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. by the well that Jesus ran into. And I say that Jesus ran into and 
I think the Sunday school teacher touched on it a little bit this morning. Yes, sir. Uh, nah, nah. Uh, it was a place called Samaria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Samaria to the Jewish people was not a place that they like to go. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Literally, the Orthodox Jewish person hated the Samaritan people so much that instead of going through Samaria, they would literally go around right. Samaria. Right. Somebody told me that the fastest way to a place is a straight line. Mm -hmm. But their hatred was so hatred because the Samaritans were a mixed race people. Right, yeah. right. And the Jewish folk uh, just literally hated them. They were prejudiced. Yes. And then come along this man by the name of Jesus, the man that some called a rabbi. Mm -hmm. And instead of going around like most Orthodox Jews would do, Jesus told his disciples, let us go through Samaria. Yeah. We must need to go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is not a part of my sermon, but maybe some of you need to realize that you've got to overcome uh, Oh, your prejudices is in right. life and uh, take that straight line through uh, Samaria right. and maybe somebody will get saved if you open your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You only want to tell the good news to those who look like you, All those right. who talk like you, those who walk like you. Yeah. But God has called us as a people to baptize all Nation. All, nations. Right. all nations and how will all nations know unless you open your mouth right. hello somebody right modern day term is that cross cultural witnessing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, but there's some other folk. Uh, maybe it's not that you have to witness to somebody. Maybe it's that you have to go through something that you didn't want to go through. Hold on. Yes. Mm. Well, I well. uh, and God is saying that if you, you have to go through this. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, he may be saying uh, to somebody that is listening at the sound of my voice. Uh, oh, you want it to work out, but, but, but you may have to go through a divorce. Oh, Lord. You may have to go through cancer. Mm. You may have to go through the storms uh, in life uh, because you can't make nobody do anything. You you can't make a mate that abandoned you uh, oh, to come back home and live with you and to love you. Uh, I know uh, uh, of a person that, oh, they, they still say that they're married, but their mate hasn't been there in a whole year's time. Come on. Hello, somebody. That's called abandonment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And there's some things in this life, oh, this preacher had to go through. I never wanted to go through. Oh, but 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 but, but God sent me through it. Oh, and he got me through it. And as a result, I can go back and reach somebody else who has gone through it. Some stuff that I, I didn't like, some stuff I didn't want. Oh, some sicknesses that I didn't love. You hear me complain? Oh, when I went to the doctor, the doctor saw, oh, the diagnosis for me, Reverend, was that I was obese. Come on. Oh, Come on. Hello, somebody. Well, mm -hmm. And that I had to lose some weight. It was causing me high blood pressure. So now, almost every day, I have to go through the gym. Oh, Hello, somebody. Oh, <laughs> and little shop of horrors, that place that I hate. But the more I go through it, the better. And somebody here, God is saying, oh, you're going to have to go through it. Yes, it's going to hurt. It's going to be pain. But you're going to come out on the other side. You may have to go through this sickness, through this bankruptcy, through it. Oh, oh but I'm so glad that God told me. Oh, and that's a songwriter said that 
listening, but you're a preacher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but God is saying, you've got to go through. Uh, oh, and there's some other person here today. You're going to have to allow somebody to help you physically so that you can give them what they need spiritually. Come on, Lord. Oh, and I'm going to talk about that when Jesus started this conversation on the point number one. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. but, but this morning, oh, we're talking about the well water revival. Oh, and under on, on, on point number one, a conversation. It says, and when the, uh, 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 when the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus uh, said to her, will you give me a drink? First of all, oh, you have to be careful that when you go out to, to do some of the mundane things in life, uh, oh, that little stuff that you do that seems to count like it, it doesn't count forget about anything, uh, a simple walk, uh, oh, oh, to get and to draw some water would lead her to her destiny with cards. Uh, and you've got to be careful, oh, and be ready, oh, to do the mundane things, oh, because in doing those things, you can get in contact with God. Right. Hello, and that maybe that's why Mama and them used to sing all the time when, oh, when they did the housework. Maybe that's uh, why back in the cotton field they they used to sing all the time because when they they would come in contact with God in the minute things of life. All right. Hello, somebody. Have you come in contact with God? My Lord. Yes. All right. Yes. And again, like I said before, a conversation. It's interesting what Jesus said in this conversation. He began the conversation letting someone meet his physical need mm -hmm. so that he could meet her spiritual need. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody says, and when the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me drink? Jesus wasn't too proud to ask for help. All right. Come on. Hello, somebody. Some of us Christians, we get too proud to, to ask for help. Get too proud to go to the doctors. Get too proud to, to, to allow someone to help us. Oh, but maybe it is in that moment of when you need help that God is leading you to a divine appointment to have a conversation with somebody that don't know him. Say to your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Are you ready to have a conversation? Oh, have a conversation. He, he was ready and in this conversation he had the need don't be oh, afraid to oh, witness uh, to those that are helping you don't be afraid to witness uh, to the doctors don't be afraid to witness uh, to those folk that help you your boss uh, and other people that can help you don't be afraid when you're going to get your needs met physically oh to transfer oh and fit the script and have a conversation oh, about Jesus. Yes, come on, yes, come on. Sir. Are you ready to have a conversation? Yes, sir. Right. A conversation. Mm -hmm. A conversation. Mm -hmm. In this minute moment, in this minute time, just simply going to uh, to get a drink of water. Mm -hmm. Just simply, just simply going. She she met Jesus. All right. And it happened many times in the in the Bible. These little minute moments of where a folk would go out to the well. In Genesis twenty-four, verse seventeen, the text says the servant Harry to help her or meet her and said, "Please give me a little drink of water uh, from your jug." Mm -hmm. And that was oh uh, Abraham's servant uh, who went off uh, to find a wife uh, for Abraham's son. Uh, and the servant uh, had prayed a little popcorn prayer and, and said, if this person is, is willing to help me, then, then maybe this person is the one for uh, my, my, my servant or uh, uh, my master's son. And her willingness to help in the little minute things of life, her, her willingness uh, to help uh, would, would cause her to meet her destiny. Never underestimate the power of service. Amen. Amen. 
The greatest in the kingdom of God shall be a servant. Many people want titles. Oh, but they don't want the tiles to serve God. Come on. Right. God is calling us here to be a greater church and he wants us uh, to serve him greatly. Amen. Amen. And when we serve him in the little minute things as we've been talking about, picking up the trash, uh, oh, that's that's a minute thing. We want you to pick up the trash. Oh, oh, you don't leave the trash down at home. Uh, oh, then don't leave it down at the church. Pick, pick up the trash. Take, take care of the little stuff that you do for Jesus. Amen. Amen. One thing that really impressed me was a uh, Oh, I was walking one time and Dr. E.K. Bailey, he's pastor of the Concord Missionary Baptist Church there in, in Dallas, Texas. And he and he was a pastor of a mega church and he walked down the hall and saw a piece of trash. And guess what he did? He didn't call his deacons to come and pick it up. He picked it up himself. Amen. Amen. He was a big man willing to stoop low. And God uses those kinds of people. Amen. Are you willing to stoop low? Are you willing to serve God in the minute things of, of life? Are you willing to simply have a conversation about Christ? Mm -hmm. Many people, that's the hardest thing to do. But all you've got to do is to flip the script. Mm -hmm. And if you know the word, you can change the conversation from the physical need that you are trying to get met mm -hmm. to a spiritual need. Yeah, Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus told her about a water and a well that she wouldn't have to draw from. Mm -hmm. it, would, it, would, it, it would lead to eternal life. This little conversation. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, are you ready to conversate are about that? Are you ready to conversate about that? Yeah. Don't you know that the greatest marketing on planet earth mm -hmm. is still word of mouth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now many of us, we have these fancy yeah. smartphones. Yeah. And we can text and we can update our status on Facebook, tweet, and do all this kind of stuff just from the phone. Uh, oh, but the greatest, again, witness is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Just have a conversation about Christ. Conversation. The same way you have a conversation about that place that you love to eat. Oh, uh, there's a place uh, that, that, that we took Sister E. Tom to for her birthday called Texas Day Brazil. Ooh, and it has some good food. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. All kind of steaks and filet mignons they bring into. Oh, the preacher had to back away from the table. No. So I was on the verge of gutting there, preacher. Right. <laughs> but, but word of mouth, and now I spoke about it, and now you want to go. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just have a, a conversation about You don't have to be an experienced preacher. You don't have to be Billy Graham. All you have to do is tell about your personal experience with him. And, and if you know him, guess what? You can witness. Right. Hello, Amen. As a matter of fact, that, that's the first thing that most people do when they come to know Jesus. is witness for him. Right. Right. About the change that he, he made in my heart. I used to worry all the time. Now I have peace. I have joy. Oh, that's a witness. I, I gave my life uh, to Jesus Christ. And, and, and things have changed. Man. Yes, things right. have changed. Mm -hmm. Jesus uh, just had a conversation with this woman. Oh, and that conversation led to a convert. Mm -hmm. Can you conversate about Jesus? Can, can the next time you're at the buffet, can you can you just talk to a stranger and say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord oh, is good. Is good. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's some good food here at Fries and Furs. I know it's good food at Pumpkins and, and other places. But oh, taste and see that the Lord yeah. Yeah. is good. Yes, yeah. Flip the script and the conversation and talk about Him. Well, we talk about everybody else. Oh, when we're in love, when we fall in love. Oh, oh, we want to talk to that person all day and all night. I can remember, oh, when we were 
Lord. But since he turned out with dating him, and we were talking, we tried to talk all night long. Uh, some of you would do the same talk all night long. Fall asleep on the phone, wake up the next morning, still talking. Oh, because you wanted, you love that person that you wanted to have a conversation with. Why don't you talk about Jesus uh, yeah. and all that he's done? Uh, he's still uh, a miracle working God. Uh, he still delivers. Uh, he still set free. Oh, but the world won't know it until we start talking about him. Amen. Amen. That's why it's always good to have new converts because old converts uh, all get a little stale. Come on. Come on. Hello, somebody. And, and we forget it and we lose our influence, our sphere to reach people. Oh, and, and maybe, oh, we're, we're all convert, but we've talked to everybody in our sphere of influence. Uh, oh, but God is saying that you have a talk to not everybody in your influence. Now it's time to cross over. Talk to them people that you hate. Talk to them people that you don't like. Talk uh, to folk uh, that you can't stand. Uh, oh, that's your harvest field. My Lord. Hello, somebody. Jesus Amen. talked. Like in this conversation, he talked with, uh, number one, a Samaritan. He overcame prejudice. Number two, he talked to a woman. And usually Jews wouldn't talk uh, to women like that in public. Oh, he overcame all that to, to talk to her. He went through Samaria to talk to some of you. Had to go through some places. Uh, oh, to have a little talk about Jesus. Say, you have a neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It's time for you to talk. Time for you to talk. We talk about everything else. We talk about our sports, our favorite sports team. Uh, oh, uh, for you, most of you, it's the Sooners, the Cowboys, uh, oh, the Dallas Cowboys, the Thunder. Oh, we talk about them and we know the score. But do you talk about God and know the score? Come on, amen, amen. amen. Yeah. Hello, somebody. God has never lost a game. Mm. Come on. Oh, let me say that again. God has never lost. A, you, God will, will, will never disappoint you because Amen. he lost. Yeah. Hello, some of my favorite teams, like my team, the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, I can't, I can't talk about them now because they lost. They lost. Hello, oh. somebody. Yeah. They disappointed. Hello, somebody. Yeah. But I can always talk about God because God always have a perfect season. God always wins in the playoff. God always wins. God is worthy for me to talk about, to say something about it to the people that I know and the people that I don't know. It's time for us, if we want to make him know, it's time for us to have a conversation about Jesus. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, you don't speak up. You don't speak up. Who's going to speak up? Who's going to speak up? Hello, somebody. Just a little conversation. I'm not telling you to preach to him. Jesus didn't preach to him. That's right. Jesus didn't try to shove the Bible. And, and like when I first got saved, boy, I used to beat folk over the head and want to force them to know God. Come on. Come on. <laughs> no, you can't do that. All you got to do is have a conversation. And if they want to talk about God, that's an opening. And if they don't, Come on. keep it moving. Amen. Amen. Find somebody who will. Don't Amen. talk to them folk who are, are, are supposed to be saved and want to debate you about whether or not this principle or that principle is right. Oh, don't waste your time talking to them. They already know too much. Come on. Yeah. Amen. We're looking for folk who are open to hear about who God is. Oh, and those are our harvest field. Right. Yeah. Jesus came and said, hey, can you give me a drink of water? Oh, and she went out oh, on this mundane tour and met God. In the same way this other woman went out and met her destiny in the mundane things of God. Now, we talk about the convert. Uh, that conversation led to a convert. It says in verse 28 uh, of John chapter uh, 4, it says, Then leaving her water, just see, it wasn't about the water anyway. Come on, come on. <laughs> she came meeting a need, getting a need met, uh, and had a conversation with Jesus. Uh, and guess what? And left that water jar behind. Uh, it's not about how you start the conversation. Yeah. It's about how... Oh, you translate over to God and tell it folk about who God is and before you know it that person that you were trying to let them meet your needs will drop what they're doing and guess what then they will 
start having a conversation. Amen. Amen. That's a convert. Converts yeah. talk about God. Come on. Yeah. Hello, somebody. And yeah. it says she dropped her water jar. The woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything uh, I ever did. Uh, come to, to this. Uh, could this be the Messiah? Man. Come. See a man who told me everything I ever did. Hello, somebody. And many times you're sitting in the sanctuary and you think I, somebody been talking to me about you. You think I've been on the gossip line. You, you say, that, that, that preacher's preaching my business. Oh, that's, that's God uh, uh, speaking through me because he knows everything. In this text, uh, he blew her mind. Uh, oh, she came out. Uh, oh, and, and, and Jesus uh, told her about herself. Amen. Hello, Amen. Amen. She, had, she had five husbands. Wow. And, and the one person she, she was with now, she was just living with oh, shacking. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. She, she, she was a woman who had problems with trying to find true love like many of us. And our day and time, it would jump from one person to the next, uh, and the next person, and the next. Uh, she must have been a bad member, Gemma, because she got five men to propose to her and got another to take care of her and live with her. She must have been a bad member, Gemma. But guess what? <laughs> Hello, somebody. Her looks couldn't say Hello. Right. Right. Hello, somebody. Right. Uh, uh, those men couldn't save her. Uh, the love that she was seeking uh, is the love that I, I tell single Christians. Uh, many times uh, you're out uh, looking for the one going and wondering, is this the one? Oh, is she the one? Is he the one? Uh, I'd like to let you know that if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've already found the one. Uh, and yeah, you don't have yeah. to go seeking yeah. and searching yeah. for anybody else uh, as long as you've got Jesus. You found the one. You're not single anyway. Because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. And the last thing I know is that when two people are together, that means that I am not alone. Somebody has been dying of loneliness. Somebody. And the devil makes you think that you are alone. No, you're not alone. You may be married. Some of the most lonely folk in the world. And most people don't tell you that is married folk. Hello, sir. Come on. Because we thought this person was going to meet all of our needs. Uh, and no one person can meet all of your needs. Uh, Amen. Hello. Amen. The only Amen. somebody that can meet all of your needs uh, oh, is the one that we need to get yeah, you talking yeah. about. And his name uh, is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And he can uh, meet all of your needs. Uh, he can meet your needs for love. Uh, he can meet your needs for company. He can meet your... Oh, if you know Jesus, uh, you don't have to spend and waste your life looking for love in all the wrong on, places. God, uh, on, he, she had been looking for love in all the wrong places and all the wrong people. Been with five men like Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, you wow. know what Elizabeth Taylor says uh, to all of her husbands? What did she say? She said, well, uh, oh, what many preachers say, I won't keep you long. Right. Wow. Hello, somebody. One preacher said, oh, oh, these love of hers was, was like Kim Kardashian. Oh, it won't keep you long. Hello, somebody. My Lord. But she was looking for love in all the wrong people and all the wrong places. And, and, but she had a conversation with Jesus and Jesus spoke to her knees, her knees in my heart, her desires. And she had to go because her conversation with Jesus, she was converted and had to go and tell folks, come see a man who told me everything I did come to. Could he be the Messiah? Yes. Amen. She, Amen. She was a convert and she had to go back and tell the whole town about a man that, 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 that told her about herself. Right. Hello somebody. Do you serve this same God? Well, I believe that you do. Do you love this same God? I, I believe that you do. And, 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 and there will be no converts, no revival, unless you're willing to have a conversation. Yeah, Lord. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. This revival happened because this well water revival happened because Jesus was willing to have a conversation. And when he had a conversation, he had a convert. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, John 4, 17, I, I, she, here's what Jesus said. Bust her out. She said, I have no husbands. She said, and Jesus said to her, you're right when you say that you have no husbands. In fact, you have had five husbands, and the man that you have now is not your husband. What? You are. What you have just said is quite true. You see, and that's another thing. You can never hide your business from God. Come on, right. amen, amen. Some church folk think that they can hide from Show God. Can. Show can. And they can play this phony role, walk Come up on. in there, acting like they're holy. Yeah. And they're out there, hello somebody. Come on, out there. With these five men are living with somebody, hello somebody. God knows your business. Yes, and He wants you to get right, church. And let's go home. Let's go home. Get right, church. Right. Oh, and have a conversation. Right. Get right, church. And when you have that conversation, you can have a convert. God, oh, wants the world to know about Him. Amen. Mm. Amen. Tell Amen. somebody. Yes, Lord. That convert led to a company. Well, mm -hmm. Verse 39, it says, Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him mm -hmm. because of the woman's testimony. Yeah. He told me everything I ever did. Amen. That's another thing. Usually, normally, a person responds by someone of their own sex. But God used this woman and from this woman, the well water revival took place. Yes. Uh -huh. She used her influence as a woman. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. And that's what some of you have to do. You may have a mate that's, that don't know him. Don't fuss and fight and argue. Well, well. They'll never get to know him that way. Come on, Doc. You've got to use your womanliness. Uh -uh. You have to be quiet and serve him and mm. treat him like a king or mm. vice versa. Mm. You, 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 you're supposed to love them so much that they want to come in contact with the God that you serve. Amen. Amen. Now that's a real conversation. That's, that's one of those that the Old Testament meaning of conversation means lifestyle. You've got to have such a lifestyle. Hello, somebody. Right. That, 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 that the ladies, the Bible said literally that if you can win a man, you're really supposed to be your husband to Christ without saying a word. Come on, Doc. By, by your quiet spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I hate to hear about old folk of uh, uh, Christian women that's supposed to be holy nagging their husbands. Come on. Hello, somebody. Why are you not going to church? Why are you? You need to get up to church. You need to get right with God. You need to. And you're nag, nag, nagging them. And, and as far as they say, if, 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 if that's your God, oh. come on, that's what they say. He causing you to act like this. Come on. Come on. Hello, somebody. I don't want to have nothing to do with Show you that. Right. Come on. Hello, somebody. But she used her, uh, she used her, her womanliness to, to lead a town. Amen. It says, the woman told her testimony. Verse 40 says, and so when the Samaritans came to her, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And, and what? And because of his words, many more became believers. Mm -hmm. Just a, a conversation. Mm -hmm. Just from a conversation, we have a revival in this town. Mm -hmm. Those who are about to be baptized, uh, go and go back now. Bill Ford and Sister Alexandria. A company. A company from a conversation. Come on. A company of folk. Because Jesus wanted to have a need met. A company from a conversation. Not from preaching. Say you're preaching for the pulpit. Amen. Hello, somebody. Savior preaching 
we want you to have and leave this place. If this is going to be truly a share of the love Sunday. If this, this is going to be a, a year where we make him known. Some of us are going to have to have a conversation with some folk that we may not like. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Come God. For the Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Come on. Hello, somebody. Amen. We want to make him known we, we've got to talk about him. Amen. We've got to conversate about him. We've got to go to places that we don't, don't normally go to have a conversation. Let me say that again. We've got to go to places where we don't normally go to, to, to have a conversation. Instead of going around West Town. Hello, somebody. You may need to go to West Town. Come on. Hello, somebody. So avoiding those people that you avoid, baby, you've got to go and meet them and just have a little conversation Amen. about Jesus. A conversation, just, just, just to talk about, just to open your mouth and tell them what Jesus done for you. Her, her testimony was unique. She just said, come meet a man who told me about myself. That's it. That's all she said. And that was her testimony. That was her witness. Come see a man who, who told me about myself. And, and I said this, I think, from a Wednesday night, that we need to talk about Jesus uh, so much uh, that folk, when they come through those doors, uh, should be literally looking up in the pulpit, literally looking for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.